everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Alex and today I'm going to be checking in on my 2019 reading goals. Now I was not on booktube at the beginning of this year so I didn't post an official reading goals video but today I'm going to be letting you know what those goals were and where I stand on them. Now for this year I actually only set five goals for myself but they were all pretty lofty goals so it's time for us to see how we're doing so far. <laughs> So without further ado, let's get started. Now the first goal that I set for myself this year was to read 75 books. Now to put that in perspective, last year I think that I set my goal at only around 30 books. At the beginning of 2018, I was going from being a stay-at-home mom to starting a new full-time job and I wasn't sure how my reading was going to be affected by that. So I set my goal really low at 30 and wound up reading 100. So at the beginning of 2019, things changed for us as well. We wound up moving across the state and I went back to being a stay-at-home mom. So I wasn't sure how my reading was going to be affected. So I thought that I could still read quite a bit, but I wanted to drop my goal a little bit and put less pressure on myself. So I set it at 75. Now, as of filming this video on July 1st, I have read 70 books so far this year. So I am way ahead of schedule. I'm not gonna be altering my Goodreads goal, but I will still be using Goodreads to keep up with my reading for the rest of the year. But we are gonna have absolutely no problem meeting that goal. I will probably be meeting it within the next week or two. My second goal was to complete the 2019 Pop Sugar Reading Challenge. Now every year, Pop Sugar puts out a reading challenge. They will usually release the prompts in November and they do 40 challenges that you pick a book for each one and they also have 10 bonus challenges if you wanna make it harder. Now I like doing challenges like this because it helps me to pick up more backlist books that have kind of fallen off of my radar and just to expand my reading taste in general. So I thought that this is a good way to do it. I've been doing this challenge for a couple of years now and have really enjoyed it. Now, like I said, I am doing the 50 book version of this challenge. So by mid year, I should have read 20 25 books to be on track and as of filming I have read 23. So I am just barely behind on this challenge but with all the books that I've already read so far this year I don't see there being an issue with me going ahead and completing this goal by the end of the year. Now my third goal was to complete the 2019 Around the Year in 52 Books reading challenge. Now this challenge is a group on Goodreads where there are 52 prompts, one for every week of the year and they each give you a new book to read. Now you can complete this challenge in order and most people do. I have not completed it in order, but I would like to try to get to all 52 that I set out for myself in the beginning of the year. Now I did take a few of the challenges for the Pop Sugar and the Around the Year and I used the same book to fulfill a challenge in each one. So I overlapped a little bit. Now like I said, there are 52 books in this challenge. So halfway through the year, I should have read 26. And as a filming, I have read 27. So I am just barely over halfway through. I'm really happy about that. I thought I was actually behind on this challenge but it turns out I'm just a little bit ahead so we're pushing on. Now my fourth goal was to complete my booktuber challenge. Now, I actually posted a video about this way back I think it was like the second video that I ever posted on my channel but for the past couple of years I have been doing this challenge where at the end of the year when all of the booktubers that I watch are posting their favorite books of the year video and I will spend the whole month of January watching those videos and tallying up the books and if a book that I haven't read yet appears on three or more people's list then I place it into a separate list and I make it my goal to read those books by the end of the year. So I wound up with 10 books that met those qualifications and so far in the year I have read six of them. So again, I'm a little bit more than halfway through really excited for that and the other four I know that I'll be getting to by the end of the year. Now I do have one more goal to talk about but I want to go ahead and say that at the end of the video I'm going to be running through all three of the challenges that I mentioned and breaking down every single book that is in those challenges. So if you don't care about those and then you can stop after the next goal but if you do stick around and I'll list all of that for you. Now my last challenge that I set for myself this year was to reread 12 books. Now, I am not somebody that rereads that often. There are always so many new books on my radar that I don't really find the time to reread, but I really wanted to try to make it a priority for myself this year. So I wanted to reread 12 books this year, so one a month, but as of filming this, I should have gotten to six. I've only reread two. Future Alex jumping in, I've actually reread three books instead of two. Still behind, but three, not two. So that is the goal that I'm failing at so far this year. I do have plans to still get to the other 10 that I want to reread, but we'll see how it goes. Hopefully I'll actually attain that goal. So that is it for my goals. I would say that I am doing pretty well. Four out of the five goals I am way on track to meet. Just that one goal you guys are gonna have to stay up me for. 
So from here, I'm actually going to go into my three reading challenges for the year and list out the books that I have set for those challenges. So if you don't care about that, bye, have a nice day. But if you do care about that, we're gonna go ahead and jump into the Pop Sugar Reading Challenge. Now I am just going to go through and list off the challenge and the book that I have assigned to that challenge. And if I have already read it, then I will let you know what rating I gave it. So without further ado, let's get started. For a book becoming a movie in 2019, I have chosen The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna, which I gave a five out of five. For a book that makes you nostalgic, I chose The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald, which was a reread and I gave a 5 out of 5. For a book written by a musician, I chose How to Ruin Everything by George Watsky. For a book you think should be turned into a movie, I chose Far From the Tree by Robin Benway. For a book with at least 1 million ratings on Goodreads, I've chosen The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. For a book with a plant on the title or on the cover, I chose Go Set a Watchman, which I gave a 3.5 out of 5 stars. For a reread of a favorite book, I chose The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. For a book about a hobby, I chose Brainiac by Ken Jennings. For a book you meant to read in 2018, I chose Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappio, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. For a book with pop, sugar, or challenge in the title, I chose The 100 Thing Challenge by Dave Bruno. For a book with an item of clothing or an accessory on the cover, I chose The Cheerleaders by Kara Thomas, which I gave a 3.5 out of 5 stars. For a book inspired by mythology, legend, or folklore, I chose The Last Olympian by Rick Riordan, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. For a book published posthumously, I chose The Opposite of Loneliness by Marina Keegan, which I gave a 4.5 out of 5 stars. For a book you see someone reading on TV or in a movie, I chose Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. This was a reread for me and I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. For a retelling of a classic, I have chosen Pride by Evie Zaboy. For a book with a question in the title, I've chosen Who Could That Be at This Hour by Lemony Snicket, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. For a book set on a college or university campus, I chose The Secret History by Donna Tartt, which I gave a 3.5 out of 5. For a book about someone with a superpower, I chose Vicious by V.E. Schwab. For a book told from multiple character point of views, I chose Fallen Kingdoms by Morgan Rhodes, which I gave a 5 out of 5 stars. For a book set in space, I chose Dare My Things by Heather Kaczynski. For a book by two female authors, I chose Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. For a book that contains the word salty, sweet, bitter, or spicy, I chose Sweet Bitter by Stephanie Dandler, which I wound up DNFing. For a book set in Scandinavia, I chose Bear Town by Frederick Bachman, which I gave a 5 out of 5. For a book that takes place in a single day, I chose Forgive Me Leonard Peacock by Matthew Quick, which I gave a 3.5 out of 5. For a debut novel, I chose Again But Better by Christine Riccio, which I gave a 2.5 out of 5. For a book published in 2019, I chose Defy Me by Tahata Mafi, which I gave a 4 out of 5. For a book featuring an extinct or imaginary creature, I chose A Court of Horns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass, which I gave a 4.5 out of 5. For a book recommended by a celebrity you admire, I chose Song of Solomon by Toni Morrison, which I gave a 3.5 out of 5. For a book with love in the title, I chose Love and Gelato by Jenna Evans Welch, which at the time of filming this, I'm currently reading it. By the time you see this, it will probably have been finished and I'll put the rating that I gave it down here. For a book featuring an amateur detective, I chose A Clue for the Puzzle Lady by Parnell Hall. For a book about a family, I chose Commonwealth by Ann Patchett, which I gave a 3.5 out of 5. For a book written by an author from Asia, South America, or Africa, I chose Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. For a book with a zodiac sign or astrology term in the title, I have chosen Zodiac by Romina Russell. For a book that includes a wedding, I've chosen The Wedding Date by Jasmine Guillory, which I gave a 4.5 out of 5. For a book by an author whose first and last name starts with the same letter, I chose The Battle of the Labyrinth by Rick Riordan, which I gave a 3.5 out of 5 stars. For a ghost story, I chose The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. For a book with a two-word title, I chose The Selection by Kira Cass, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. For a novel based on a true story, I chose The Brief History of Seven Killings by Marlon James. For a book revolving around a puzzle or game, I chose Ready Player One by Ernest Cline, which I gave a 4.5 out of 5 stars. To pick a book for your favorite prompt from a previous Pop Sugar reading challenge, I chose the prompt of picking a book with a day of the week or a month of the year in the title, and for that one I chose A Million Junes by Emily Henry. For a cli-fi or climate fiction book, I've chosen We All Looked Up by Tommy Wall. For a choose your own adventure book, I chose Romeo and or Juliet by Ryan North. For an own voices book, I chose Everything Leads to You by Nina LaCour, which I gave a 3 out of 5 stars. For read a book during the season it is set in, I chose Second Chance Summer by Morgan Matson. For a lit RPG book, I chose Wild Card by Marie Lu. For a book with a unique chapter format, I chose The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime by Mark Haddon, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. For two books with the same title, I chose Forever by Pete Hamill. 
and Forever by Judy Bloom. For a book that has inspired a common phrase or idiom, I chose A Catch-22 by Joseph Heller. And finally, for a book that's set in an abbey or monastery, I chose Grave Mercy by Robin Lefevers. Now we're going to be moving on to the Around the Year in 52 Books Reading Challenge. I'm going to do it the same way that I did the Pop Sugar. I'll let you know the challenge, the book title, and whether I've read it and what I rated it. For a book that nominated or won an award for a genre you enjoy, I chose The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid, which I gave a 5 out of 5 stars. For a book with one of the five W's in the title, I chose You'll Miss Me When I'm Gone by Rachel and Solomon, which I gave a 4.5 out of 5 stars. For a book where the author's name contains the letters A, T, and Y, I chose The Great Unknowable End by Katherine Ormsby. For a book with a criminal character, I chose The Girl From Everywhere by Heidi Heilig. For a book by or inspired by Shakespeare, I chose Exit Pursued by a Bear by E.K. Johnston. For a book with a dual timeline, I chose Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. For two books related to the same topic, genre, or theme, I chose The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna and... Before I Let Go by Marika Nijkamp, which I gave a 3.5 out of 5 stars. For a book from one of the top 5 money-making genres, I chose Fallen Kingdoms by Morgan Rhodes, which I gave a 5 out of 5 stars. For a book featuring a historical figure, I chose Stalking Jack the Ripper by Kiri Maniscalco, which I gave a 4.5 out of 5 stars. For a book related to one of the 12 Chinese zodiac animals, I chose The Unexpected Everything by Morgan Matson, which I gave a 5 out of 5 stars. For a book about reading, books, or an author, I chose Literally by Lucy Keating. For a book included on a New York Public Library staff picks list, I chose Never World Wake by Marisha Pessel. For a book relating to an astronomical term, I chose The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. For a book by a Mediterranean author or set in a Mediterranean setting, I chose Love and Gelato by Jenna Evans Welch. Again, I will probably have read this by the time you see this video. I'll let you know what I rated it here. For a book told from multiple perspectives, I chose The Nowhere Girls by Amy Reed, which I gave a 5 out of 5. For a speculative fiction, I chose Blanca y Roja by Anna Marie McLemore. For a book related to an element on the periodic table, I chose The Silver Mask by Holly Black and Cassandra Clare. For a book by an author with more than one book on your TBR, I chose Hopeless by Colleen Hoover, which I gave a 4.5 out of 5 stars. For a book featuring indigenous people of a country, I chose The Marrow Thieves by Sherry Demoline. For a book from one of the polarizing or close call votes for the Around the Year Challenge, I chose Vicious by V.E. Schwab. For a book with a number on the title or in the cover, I chose Three Dark Crowns by Kinder Blake. The next four books in the challenge are related to the old wedding rhyme. So for something old, I chose Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. For something new, I chose Famous in a Small Town by Emma Mills. For something borrowed, I chose The Borrower by Becca Mackay. And for something blue, I chose Another Day by David Levin. Then. For a book on the 1001 books to read before you die list, I chose The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime by Mark Haddon, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. For a book relating to something cold, I chose Blankets by Craig Thompson. For a book published before 1950, I chose Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. For a book featuring an elderly character, I chose Ghost at a Watchman by Harper Lee, which I gave a 3.5 out of 5 stars. For a children's classic you've never read, I chose Anne of Green Gables by Ellen Montgomery, which I gave a 5 out of 5 stars. For a book with more than 500 pages, I chose Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J. Mass. For a book you've owned for over a year, and haven't read yet, I chose The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness, which I gave a 2.5 out of 5 stars. For a book with a person's name in the title, I chose The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer by Michelle Hodgkin. For a psychological thriller, I chose Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Penborough, which I gave a 5 out of 5. For a book on an NPR Best Books of the Year list, I chose The Inexplicable Logic of My Life by Benjamin Adonisans, which I gave a 5 out of 5. For a book set in a school or university, I chose Winger by Andrew Smith. For a book not written in the traditional format, I chose Me Being Me is Exactly as Insane as You Being You by Todd Hasek Lowry, which rounded up being a DNF for me. For a book with a strong sense of place, I chose Wild Beauty by Anna Marie McLemore. For a book you stumbled upon, I chose A Light Too Bright by Samuel Miller. For a book from the 2018 Goodreads Choice Awards, I chose Elevation by Stephen King, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. For a book with a monster or monstrous character, I chose This Savage Song by Victoria Schwab, which I gave a 2.5 out of 5 stars. For a book related to STEM, I chose Coding Verity by Elizabeth Wine which I gave a 3 out of 5 stars. For a book related to a movie or TV show that you have enjoyed, I chose Orange is the New Black by Piper Kerman. For a multi-generational saga, I chose The Strange and Beautiful Stars of Ava Lavender by Leslie Walton. For a book with a mostly black cover, I chose The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. For a book related to food, I chose Beneath the Sugar Sky by Shauna McGuire, which I gave a 3.5 out of 5 stars. For a finalist or winner for the National Book Award, I chose The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo, which I gave a 5 out of 5 stars. For a book written by a Far East Asian author or set in a Far East Asian country, I chose The Astonishing Color of After by Emily Exar Pan, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. For a book that includes a journey, I chose Going Bovine by Libba Bray, which I gave a 3.5 out of 5 stars. For a book published in 2019, I chose Define Me by Tahara Mafi, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. And finally, for a book with a weird or intriguing title, I chose The Ghosts of Heaven by Marcus Sedgwick, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. Now, super, super quickly, I'm going to let you know about the 10 books that were on my booktuber challenge for the year as well. 
I'll start with the six books that I have finished. So first was Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi, which I gave a four out of five. Next was The Seven Husbands of Evan Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid, which I gave a five out of five. The Coral Prince by Holly Black, which I gave a 4.5 out of five. Bear Town by Frederick Bachman, which I gave five out of five. The Astonishing Color of After by Emily X. R. Pan, which I gave a four out of five. And Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson, which I gave a five out of five. And the four that I still have yet to read are Skyward by Brandon Sanderson, An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green, and Tower of Dawn and Kingdom of Ash, both by Sarah J. Mass. So that is it for all of the challenge books that I have yet to read in 2019. Let me know if you have read any of the books that I mentioned in this video and if you agreed with my thoughts on them. And let me know also if you are participating in either of these challenges. I would love to know and I'd love to chat with you guys in the comments down below. And also let me know how you're doing with your 2019 reading goals. So until next time, bye!